So there's some kind of something Blah. with Knights of the Old Republic <laughs> 2. That was beautiful. I love it. That sound you just did. Brah! That, that needs was, to be a sound. That was <laughs> absolutely wonderful, Nathan. I need some milk. <laughs> Welcome back, one and all, to the My Mom Has Tourette's podcast. My name is Nathan. I'm Josh. Andrew. I'm Nathan, and this week, or maybe once in a long time ago, one of our mothers used to work at Hardee's. What's going on, boys? How are we doing this week? Oh, my nose. Pretty decently. Uh, yeah, pretty decently. Not too shabby. Just fell off. I want to hear about Andrew's week. <sighs> All right, we'll jump right in. That it. didn't answer the question, but okay, sure. Let's just keep going out of order because this is Josh's <laughs> world, and I, I don't really think there's it. any any real order here. This is pretty. Uh, has there ever been? To be not, honest, not truly. <laughs> we Someone just says, "I wonder how this throw. person's week was," and then we do <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, so. My week was pretty interesting. Uh, I did today. Slash, yeah, yeah, it was today because it was at like five. I started it. I made a turkey for the first time, but I smoked it, and it was supposed to take like uh, about six to seven hours. It ended up taking about 10 because I think when I started it at five in the morning, it was still really, really cold outside, so it didn't retain heat very well. But your lungs must turned be out dying. really good. Yeah, man. Smoke that thing I got 10 a hours. Puff, 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 pass, bro. I didn't want to pass, though. Because it's turkey. Who's going to pass a yeah, turkey, dude? Keep the turkey, turkey for yourself. So I made that turkey for a friend's giving that we had. It was pretty good. We got some good mashed potatoes. Shout out to Dustin for making good mashed potatoes. Um, and then, of course, we had sweet potatoes. Shout out to Nate for making great sweet potatoes. Not me. Um, yeah. So what else did we have today? Um, we had those things, turkey. We had, there was a green bean casserole, which I didn't touch with a 10-foot pole because I hate green beans. Uh, we had sweet potato pie. We had some apple pie, a bunch of good stuff. And then yesterday, yesterday I had a uh, another Friendsgiving, and I told them because I had made plans with this one previously, I was like, yo, guys, I don't mind coming, but like, I'm already making a turkey for this one. I don't want to do something crazy for yours. And they were like, that's fine. You don't have to bring anything. And I was like, yo, they're selling potatoes for like $3 a bag at Walmart. I'll just grab some mashed potatoes. So we had a bunch of good food there too. Shout out to Kirsten and Shane and Leon, even though none of you guys watch this podcast because you don't like me. What a bunch of bums. Um, I know. They're going to have to subscribe. I mean, like the name alone should really perk anyone's interest in my opinion like i at least gotta see something like that and then you know once you subscribe to our patreon that doesn't exist yet (laughs) you can see some of those outtakes bro like some of the things that we got to edit out and you'd be like wow now i don't trust these people because they are (laughs) not of the high high quality caliber character that i thought they were um but yeah so uh, for that one we had turkey mashed potatoes Turkey mashed uh, potatoes? Turkey comma mashed potatoes, my bad. <laughs> and um, we had, uh, they made broccoli cheese. I think it was broccoli cheese casserole. It was like broccoli and cheese. It looked kind of like broccoli and cheese soup lovely. with rice. So it was like kind of thick. Yeah. Um, we had fre- fe- fresh baked rolls, which um, I managed to have a concussive episode while eating. So that was new. That was a first. Um, I didn't hit my head, but I was in mid convert. I thought nine could be more, but I was mid conversation with somebody and I just like realized I was full. Like I had three plates and I was like, bro, I'm done. And I was mid conversation. And I realized at some point I had grabbed a roll and started eating it. And then I was still talking and not realizing like that I was eating something. So like I kind of spit a little bit of it out and I just like screamed and I was just like, how 
when did this get in my hand? Like, I was legitimately terrified as to how this happened. And, of course, they just thought it was funny. Um, That's but uh, hilarious yeah. in hindsight. Yes. Um, <laughs> but let's see. So I basically did a lot of food this week. Uh, the other interesting thing that happened was uh, I went to GameStop. Shout out to GameStop, as usual, because, you know, oh, I boy. just go there during my free time if I'm not asleep. Uh, so I went there. And I was like, bro, I just haven't done anything this week, and I feel like garbage. So I was like, what do I want to do? And then the little Kermit guy inside me was like, treat yourself. And I was like, <laughs> all right, I'll treat myself. So I went to get a game uh, before Josh gets to ask what game, because I'm nosy, quote unquote. Um, <laughs> I got Persona 5 Tactica, because Persona 5 is still life, even though you guys won't play it on the podcast. Shameless plug. And so I got that and well, actually let's, let's stop back up just a smidge. So I went in and I went to buy it and they were like, okay, well you still have Spider-Man two on pre-order. And I was like, hold up you guys. Oh, look at that. What about the wife? Don't forget the wife. Don't forget her. Show her love. Sorry, she's Show her back. love. The sun brought me my hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give her a hug well she's gone oh i thought you said she was whatever we're gonna continue <laughs> so i went to buy it and they were like you have spider-man 2 on pre order and i was like bro listen you convinced me to get this the day it was released so i just stayed in the store until the midnight release like you were there you handed it to me he's like you're right and so as a joke this guy was like he like grabbed the Spider-Man two game and put it in a bag and like set it on the counter. And I was like, Oh, well, if you're going to give this to me and I just push it back to him, and I was like, you can just use this as a trade in since it's unopened for the game that I want to buy. And I guess he wasn't joking about that oh. <laughs> because he, he gave me the game that I had quote purchased which didn't cost me anything. And then he opened the register and gave me $10 and 60 cents <laughs> because the game that I pre-ordered was $10 plus tax, um, more expensive than the one that I was purchasing. All right. And so at that point, when he gave me that, I said, listen, man, I told you, I already have this quote game that you were trading. And I thought you were joking. So I, I kind of had a moment where I was like, listen, Maybe he didn't understand that I was just kind of joking there. Like, and I was like, dude, seriously, like I already picked it up. It's just in your system. Apparently you guys didn't ring it out or whatever. I already have the game. I even have the receipt. I can go back home and show you like you can just void this out or whatever. And then he was explaining to me, he was like, hey, yo, like blah, blah, blah. It wasn't in our system. I just had to pay it out and you have a $70 credit now. And that's why you were given this in 10 bucks. And I was like, I am telling you mathematically you're wrong <laughs> and i'm not that's fantastic i will go i will go back i will grab the product that you Roll gave math. to me yeah i was like i will grab the product you gave to me and the receipt you gave to me and show you it was purchased and homie was just like listen this is how it's working in our system here's the game that you were supposed to purchase here's the ten dollars we owe you <clears throat> and after having this like quick like 10 minute conversation about all of it i just had to give up I was like, he's not, you're not taking this back. So I'm going to keep my receipt because I'm not going to get a felony for this. And, you know, it is what it is. So I went to go buy a game and I got a free video game in $10. So that's cool. That was, yeah, that was the fun event of my week. I was very surprised by that. Still have that $10, by the way. Way to look at it. That's not hurting GameStop at all. It's just helping you. It Way is. to look you... at it. Start the pay it forward chain. <laughs> 50 hamburgers, you're 50 coffees, better... 50 so sodas. <laughs> I was going to say. That was show is say, amazing. That me. show is incredible. Wait, wait, you... Stop, stop. I'm doing something. Have you seen the show or have you just seen that clip? I watched like half of the first season. Keep watching. It's so good. <laughs> it's not what I expected because yeah. 
I thought they were going to be full length episodes, but it's like 15 minute clips of just absolute randomness. Sometimes even shorter. Like they're very, it's just clip show, not clip show, but he just comes up with these little skits and just does multiple an episode. And it's fantastic. For the show is called, I think you should leave with Tim Robinson on Netflix. And it's just, it's so funny. I, that specific scene or that specific uh, sketch though, when he goes back around and then the lady behind him yeah. reverses and shouts the same thing. He yeah. Did. And then he tries to pull out of the drive through and he hits the curb and he's like, go, go, go. And then he's like, wait a minute, I can get out and run. And he just gets out and takes off. I don't know why that reminds that show me of this, but there was a fantastic. show they need to bring back called silent library. Do you know what that is? No. Why show do, was that great. sounds really familiar to me. So it was like an MTV show and they would there'd be like a group of people who would go into a library and then the other quote team would try to get them to like laugh and be loud and stuff but they would always do something extremely over the top like bring in like a a mariachi band or they'd have some old guy like come in and like sneeze on them or like all this random stuff to just try to get them to laugh. Yeah. And the whole idea was you can't like laugh or go over a certain decibel or something it was it was great absolutely wonderful. yeah i remember this but i never really saw it i just remember its existence that's all it was awesome. like 2009 or something i think that's awesome can we move on since that's the since we're just going to talk about how i'm old nathan how was your week not ancient week because you're young <sighs> i am three what three years younger than you two you're three bruh Three years, yeah. I'm. I've just had a really long, a few years. Um, I don't know. My week was fine. I've not been working much recently because they haven't picked up in peak yet, and there have been people in. A, there, there's a whole seniority thing. It's a union job, blah blah blah, and there's been extra people wanting extra hours, and so I've not had. Uh, I've not been working as much, but uh. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it went fine. I, I was still doing a bunch of extra editing work this week, like last week, and uh, I'm about finished with that until he gets some more projects my way, so that's cool. And uh, edited the podcast yesterday, got it all out. You knew about that as I have sent it. Oh, that went out today and I didn't share it yet. Oh, well, I'll get to that soon. And uh, that yeah, that went out today at 6 p.m., which is our uh, Alan Wake episode two episode, so... By the time you're seeing this, that will have been a week ago. Love it. But, Josh, uh, those faces you made looked like you were on the toilet this week. Not me. Yeah. It's our sizing demons. In the last episode, too. You started off the episode last episode pooping. Indeed. And I was doing some weird dance. It's always a good time. But, uh... Do a little dance. Yeah, little uh, this week, I mean, I, you know, I... Down the night. Uh, my my daily schedule has mostly Man. been get up, help my wife with her. Can we give uh, a shout out to Matthew Willard, that beautiful, handsome man? All right, you were doing what with your wife? <laughs> you Squirrel. really do have ADHD. <laughs> I'll just Listen, I'm telling, <laughs> I'm telling you, we gotta, we really have to do a segment of like what Josh's ADHD Gosh, fixation is this week. I know. Well, it's... for this month, however long it works. How's that woodworking going, by the way, Josh? Good, doing great. <laughs> what have you done? Here soon. <laughs> Josh oh, can so tell well, that I, when I it's his turn. I built the bird houses. And then my son broke the cupboard door off the <laughs> island that belongs to the house and not nice. to us. So I had to fix that. And then I had to build a little bracket for my new third monitor. Ah, uh, because my desk has this, like, so my desk is like this thick. But then going around the complete underbelly of the desk is like another piece of, like, metal. So, like, anything that clamps to the desk can't clamp because of that stupid piece of metal. So, I had to get a 2 by 4 and, like, put it under there, and it just matches just as thick as the desk in the metal. And then mm. I had to cut a piece and make a little bracket. So, my, I've got this pole that's, right. like, 39 inches long that is holding my third monitor up in the air above my head. That picture and so, now. I had to use the wood... So the the C clamp bracket could screw on and clamp to the desk. See, I'm doing Ooh. some things. Yeah. Back to me. Um, my normal 
my normal Monday to Friday is kind of it's get up pretty early, help my wife get ready for school. Um, and if I can force myself to not get back in bed for a bit, which I've been a little bit better at, I, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've been, like I said, doing the editing work, um, chilling, doing, I, I really just sit at home a lot. I really do. I don't do a lot during the week if I'm not working. Um, and then I'll, on the weekend, uh, I've been trying to keep some notes. I've been trying to get better at that, but uh, I know on Friday I actually had to take Bailey to school because we had to give our car or take our car to a mechanic and spent like $450 to get it fixed up, yeah. which is great. What's wrong with it, man? That's rough. Uh, Sorry, bad, I spent bad oil leak. a couple months ago. Oof. Oof. That's Oof. terrible. Cars are expensive. Oof. Sorry. What, you, what, what have you been looking at? Uh, Matthew Walsh has Shaggy. Huh. <laughs> oh, that's Matthew. Yeah, okay. We can give him a shout out. Um, he made his own whiskey for D and D, by the way. Sorry, I know boy. he's an awesome dude. I'd love to meet him. Yeah. And the fact that he was born looking like Shaggy, <laughs> he is blessed. He really is. Like if I you look at his picture of Shaggy, no, it's okay. This is. It's they had to do very him. little to make him look like the character. Like, maybe a wig, but that was it. He was literally born genetically to play He was Shaggy. lillardly born. To lillardly. Yes, hey. yes. Hey. You know what? I'll let hey. you have it. Yeah, I'm all really right, all I'm doing is really trying to extend my segment of how my week was because it normally is like, oh yeah, I did nothing. Josh. Um, but really, my life is boring for the most part. Almost always. Um, <clears throat> so I feel like there's not that much to say, but yeah, uh, car got taken care of, picked it up yesterday and it's not leaking oil anymore. So that's good. 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 Yeah. And, uh, cool. took, uh, our cousin to church, our, our younger cousin Jackson to church. Shout out Jackson. Jackson. He actually Jackson watches Jackson. the Jackson. podcast. Jackson. I gave him a shout out at a different Jackson. time, Jackson. 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 but he actually watches the podcast, which is, uh, let's go Jackson. I know, right? Oh, Jackson had a shout homies. out a couple weeks ago. Yep. You truly watch the podcast. You're going to tell us in the comments, how many fingers were held up here. He has a crippling case of not being able to count. So that was just rude. Just kidding. That's not true. I didn't know that. That's also not a thing. That was the first thing that came to my mind, and it was bad. But Jackson, he's saying you can't. Yeah, count. can't. No, right, man, you can uh, count better than me. Doesn't. Regardless, uh, took him to church. Uh, he had not been to our church before, I so that was cool. Count to and then, pretty much, came home. Um, eight. Did uh, I played episode three of Alan Wake today? So it's very fresh in my mind. And then I've just been chilling until we started the episode. So that's cool. Um, basically, uh, too long, didn't listen, uh, nothing. Josh, how was your week? It was all right. First of all, big shout out to my boy, Carlo, or Rossi. Carlo. Or Rick. And Matthew Lillard. Let's go, uh, Rick. He holds my back playing Tarkov. Mm. And we were playing last night, and he's like, I'm going to get off and watch a movie. And I'm like, I'm getting off. It's 5 a.m. And uh, that's just, why I saw you go live at like 4 a.m. randomly. You must well, have disconnected was, or something. <laughs> no, I was messing with things. Um, I worked Friday, so I was up at 9 a.m. Friday. Didn't get home and go to bed till like 2.30 Saturday morning. Got up at 4 a.m. Saturday morning, went back to work, came home at like 11, took like a couple hour nap, and then I ended up staying up till 5 a.m. Sunday morning. Goodness. Um, but shout out to my boy last night. We were playing, and uh, he's like, oh, you're going to be on tomorrow. And I was like, yeah, after my podcast, I got to report a, record a podcast tomorrow. And he's like, you do a podcast? And I said, yeah. He's like, oh, what is it? I'll look it up. And I was like, oh, it's it's called My Mom Has Threads Podcast. And he just started laughing. He's like, all right, I'm definitely looking it up. So if you watch this one next Good. week. Good. I got you, bro. I, I feel like we collectively made the right decision for the name of the podcast. Because yes. every time it seems like we've <clears throat> mentioned it to someone, they're like, yeah, subscribe. Yes. 
Well, what's really um, nice, though, is in a way, we get away with the name of the podcast because it's kind of like... It's kind of like the, no, I'm not racist, I have a black friend thing, where no, we're not ableist, whatever you want to call it. My this mom ableist. has Tourette's, <laughs> literally. Wow, there's that bundle of wasps again. <laughs> he found that so much funnier than I would have expected him to. I, I, I would have lost money on that bet. Um <clears throat> But because one of our mothers does have Tourette's, and so we are allowed to do it. Get out of here, haters! Yeah, my mom can't get out of here, haters! You stupid ducks. No. Um. Yeah. So that <laughs> Josh is brain right now. Monday. <laughs> it wasn't oh, we, that was just Sunday. Okay, now we have Monday. What's up next, Josh? No, last oh, Monday. We st- First oh. of all, I just want to swish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. This is up. after this comes out after yeah. Thanksgiving. True. I hope yeah, everyone yeah. had a lovely happy Thanksgiving. Turkey Day. Yeah. You no, know, before I tell you what happened to me Monday, Nathan, how about we give them the good old what we do at the end of the podcast, but needs to be actually put in the beginning of the con- podcast. So three, two, one. Bro. <laughs> Those words, you mixed them all up. I understood what you meant, and it would be good to actually, I guess we can jump in here right now. We have, our structure is so bad sometimes, but yeah, sure. Um, We do appreciate everybody, (laughs) this is our ad break, we do appreciate everybody who watches this, and uh, you know, if you want to like the video, if you want to subscribe to the channel. My mom has Tourette's broadcast. Broadcast. I screwed it up. No. (laughs) He flubbed. He flubbed. Yeah. We are all uh, struggling with words tonight. (laughs) I struggle. don't want us to make mistakes, give us money. Exactly. Yeah. No, but uh, I mean, basically, yeah, it's cool that you guys watch. But if that's all you're doing. It'd be a little cooler if you did more, um, but you don't have to. That's all I'm saying. But I'm saying if you want to like the video, if you want to subscribe, leave a comment, share this with your but friends. You are obligated. Share this but with you're your here own for the mother. People, but the people could be here for a two. Mm. <laughs> or if you want to rate us on a podcasting platform, if you're listening to us please on a don't. podcasting platform. Please don't rate us. <laughs> you could rate us one if you want to, but we would appreciate five. But if it's if we're not worth five in your mind, then don't rate us five. Do it. Don't, don't. Five in the books, but three in the hand. What's You're just that even me. <laughs> I don't know. What are you doing? I feel right like now? you were trying to go for like a bird in the hand is worth or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's what you're going that's for. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Anyways, I'm done. We're screwing up too much. All right. So Maybe Monday. <laughs> no. Monday. <laughs> I spotched it again. <laughs> Monday, uh, my mom used the car and she's like, the low tire lights on. I said, okay. So I passed two gas stations on the work on the way to work to get it done. Because I was like, I don't want to stop. I just want to go to work. But then I was like, but I want an energy drink and I want a cherry Coke. But I don't need it. So I'm not going to stop. I'll wait till after work. But I was like, I should really put air in the tire. But if I stop, I don't want to stop. So I decided the heck of it, I'll stop. So the next gas station I came up to, the air pump was disabled because somebody ran it over. Nice. Whoa. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm not stopping then. And I started thinking, like, is there any gas stations that are like easy on and off on the way to work? I was like, nah, I don't think so. All right, I'll just get it after work. Well, on the way to work, I forgot about a gas station that was an easy on and off. So get off, pull in. Fill up the two tires, spin the car around, fill up the other two. I'm like, oh, I'm here. Got to get some drinks now. So I go inside. As soon as I get out of the car, okay, this guy was parked. I'm here. Empty space. Him. I don't know if Vagzoob like this come talk to me persona but, like, immediately I get out of the car, the guy comes up, and he's like, Hey, man, is this puddle on the ground oil? I'm like, it's wet. I, I don't know. And he's like, oh, I don't know either. So I was like, here, took a napkin out of the car door, stuck it in the puddle, and I picked it up, and I said, well, it's not oil. 
it's green liquid. I said, so if your antifreeze is green, it's antifreeze. He goes, well, I parked here and then I moved over. I don't know if it's mine. I don't know if it's yours either, dude. Okay, At like, least you okay. helped this guy, not like the last guy. Good old so I go man. inside, get all my stuff, come out, go to get in the car, and he comes back up to me again. And he's like, yeah, man, I just left the, the auto shop, and they did some work on it. Don't ask me. I don't remember what they did to his car. And he's like, I think it's leaking, but I don't know. And I look under his car, and there's a whole other puddle under his car. I'm like, well, I don't know if there was a puddle when you parked in the new spot, but there's a puddle there now. He's like, really? I said, yes, you just have to look down under your car. See, so he, he's looking. He's like, I don't see anything. Well, I'm just staring at it. And next thing you know, you see drip, drip, drip. I'm like, yeah, your car's leaking. I'm watching it come out right now, actually. He goes, No. I said, yeah, bend down. So the guy's like, looking, and he goes, what is leaking? Gets in a car and <laughs> leaves. Never say goodbye. Thank you. Let me buy you something. Just gone. So I know it's not a crazy story. It's just weird. You just get it's people. Just weird. You really do exude. Please come talk to me. Uh, I don't know why. You, Does my trailer I, it feels smell like, like you actually... It feels like you just exude I'm weird energy because you <laughs> you seem to just attract those guys. So I'm attracting guys now, huh? Yes. Weird guys of that, yes. Hmm. All right, so on the gaming news, where we murder cats. That'd be kidding. <laughs> the cat's face when I said that. Oh, forgot we have dead. We can't have dead air. Meow, 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 meow. Run! Escape! Escape! All right, Anyways, back to what we were doing. <laughs> First article of gaming news has to do with Knights of the Old Republic 2, which is a ba -ba -ba Star Wars Stellar. game. Oh, yeah, Strong. they're wonderful games. Uh, the original's wonderful, too. I've never actually played the second, but I know it's wonderful Ooh, because it's Knights it of the Old good. Republic. I know. I know it's sad. However, Asper, which I'm just going to assume is the company behind Knights of the Old Republic 2. I don't want to look it up. I'm just going to assume, and you guys can just do what you want with that. Asper says, Knights of the Old Republic 2 Switch DLC was canceled because a third party objected. It's unclear who the third party is. So there's something going on in like a court case with this or something. There's some kind of lawsuit that some, that some dude took legal action against Asper claiming it falsely represented that consumers who purchased Nature of the Old Republic 2 would also get access to the restored content DLC. So because of this, there's some third party objecting to this coming to the Switch, so now the Switch is not getting one of the DLCs for the game. That's pretty much I'm, it. I'm concerned because that game came out in 2004. What DLCs are they making for a game <laughs> that's almost 20 years old? It it came out for the Switch, I'm pretty sure, recently. Yeah, it was a Switch port of the game in 2022. And then they announced that they were going to add the original version's cut content into the Switch version, which is, I guess, oh, that DLC. Oh, that's what it was. And okay. then it was canceled uh, because... Yeah, I realize that that's a super confusing thing to start off with without explaining the fact that there is a new... Like, it newly came to the Switch, but... You know. Yeah, I was just... I Because I was thinking, I was like... I know, I know it's an I old game, the even the second original one. Two. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, I don't remember any DLCs for it either. So I was. Yeah, I guess the content was going to be stuff that was not in the original. And it was like cut content mm -hmm. from the original that they were going to bring to the mm -hmm. Switch one. And now they can't because uh, a third party hey, objected. Boo, boo. The third party's probably Nintendo with how wonderful the clientele. Nintendo does like to just shut things down. What's in that They're case just... you keep zipping and unzipping? 
That's for me to know and you to not find out. USBs. It's nail clippers. It's what? Nail clippers. Did you say USBs, Nathan? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Can how I you bring up? That's weird. Can... I want to bring something up, but we we can finish. Was it USBs? Ah, uh, gaming news. No. <laughs> Article number two. Article number two. Oh, PUBG developer. Now? PUBG standing for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Crafton is the studio behind it. So the PUBG developer is creating its own Sims in Unreal Engine 5. They're trying to build a Sims competitor in the new Unreal Engine. Oh, oh and okay. So they... I was not mistaken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I looked at the article. I'm like, what? I know. That's, that's wild. Um, you have a video game that is very competitive. And your next thing you go into is PUBG Sims? to Sims. <laughs> that's yeah, that's way different genres. And they they showed it off this year during G Star in 2023, which is a South Korean uh, international gaming event. And uh, apparently, it shows like impressive looking, like l- pretty life l- lifelike, realistic graphics. And uh, it's pretty much like very similar to Sims, but with more of a hyper realistic look. And There's going to be images right here of games made in Unreal Engine. No promises. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> promises. <laughs> and the, so the official blurb for the game so far, apparently, is blurb. do you have a life you've always dreamed of? Do you need a unique experience that blurs the line between reality and imagination? In Inzoi, you can freely control the world like a god and make your ideal life a reality. Also, rather than simply living the life given to you, you can become the protagonist who leads the life you want. It's time to create your own story at Inzoi, where infinite possibilities await. So yeah, that's... That voice uh, is like a feather to my ear. Gaming News Article 3. Microsoft creates official edible controller and Willy Wonka Xbox Series X. So, yeah, um, I don't know why this is even an article. I'm just going to say I don't know why they thought that. I mean, it's an they made an edible game pad that looks like a controller. It's made of chocolate, but it doesn't work. Like a controller, obviously. Because honestly, if they like printed all the circuits and wires needed to to make a controller work out of chocolate, I would say that they are the they're gonna take over the world. Because yeah, what else that, what could they not do? They sh- people should already know that. It's like the little Santa chocolates or Easter bunny chocolates you get. Like that's not the real Easter bunny. You can't just bite his ear off and expect to get, you know, Easter next year. Completely unrelated ADHD moment for Andrew. You can apparently 3D print cheese, which not... is amazing to me. But I just would heard that. Would that just be like day. printing mold? I don't know. Would that just... like you know how robots are taking over people's Ooh. jobs? Would that mean 3D printing would get rid of cows? No. Cows can still you can't 3D print milk yet. Well, you can't. That's what cheese is made out of. Uh, you really think American cheese is made out of milk, bro? It's made out of freedom. <laughs> That's why it's this called is accurate. American Singles. This is accurate. <laughs> Episode title, oh. 3D oh. printed mold. So the box also includes five video game themed and slightly suspicious sounding chocolates. So these chocolates are called Achievement Hunting, Button Masher, your citrus sidekick, extra kick, and Wonka for the win. Remember, it is a Willy Wonka themed Xbox. I don't think the Xbox is chocolate. I think it just comes with a chocolate controller and a normal controller. Highly disappointed that they didn't mention schnozberries even once for the edible controller. I agree. Just throwing that out. I agree. And uh, that ends gaming news and leads us directly into... 
I wanted to talk Alan about something Wake. to do with sports. But, but before okay. Alan Wake, we're going to talk about something to do with sports on our gaming no, podcast. I don't think we should. Sport. Sports go huh? sports. Are we talking Athletics about Athletics is number one. We don't have to. Participant I just for want heroes. An opinion on, I want an opinion on, uh, on gambling. Go team, yeah. The, the Bengals played this week, and their quarterback got hurt. And previous to him starting the game, his hand was wrapped because there was something wrong with it. Now, they didn't report it on the injury report, and during the game, the injury got worse, and he got kicked out of the game. Well, not kicked out, but he couldn't play because he, he was hurt. Yeah. The Bengals ended up losing. So now the problem is, since he wasn't listed on the injury report, they're saying that sports gamble, gambling was affected because it would have changed how people would have placed their bets knowing that the starting quarterback was injured. So now the NFL is looking into the Bengals. And uh, do you know that guy, David, from Barstool, who does all the pizza eating things? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I read an article that he's suing the NFL to refund all bets that were placed during that game because of the whole thing. I disagree with that assessment. Personally. Why? Like, like I'm not saying like anything like for one way or the other. I'm just saying that's I wouldn't. If I were in that position, I'd be like, well, that sucks. Like you, that's the whole reason to gamble is you don't know what's going to happen, and you're you're chasing that emotional high, and just because you know, oh no, boo hoo, somebody was hurt unexpectedly, mind you. You know, and that's. It just sounds like someone's complaining that they lost money to me. It was unexpected, but also not unexpected because his hand was wrapped at the beginning of the game, which means he should have been placed on the injury list. And that's what they're saying is that he wasn't placed on the list, which affected how people placed their bets because they thought he was in top condition. Yeah, but you've played fantasy football before, Josh. Like, how many times do you have to wait 20 minutes till kickoff because somebody wasn't sure if they were going to be listed as playing or not. Like that's just, that's part of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's just part of how it goes. And it just sounds like to me, he's complaining because, you know, they changed their mind last minute. They said he's going to start. And then they realized that maybe it was a little worse than they thought. And so they made a last minute decision. Like, well, he played, know, just, he just got injured during the game. Yeah. So do you think uh, your that's opinion even better. Is that it matters? No, <laughs> it does. But do you think your opinion is that because, like, if you were to put a sports bet in, it wouldn't be like a whole lot of money compared to some of these guys who are throwing, throwing thousands of dollars? No, like, like I said, uh, maybe I didn't say it specifically, but like, it, it almost just sounds like some kid who just put a lot of money on something and fa- like it failed for him, it didn't work out, you know. it's that's just how life works. Deal with it. Truth. I mean, the, these things happen. You know, you're, you know, I don't know, put it in different terms. Like, what if you were betting on Pee Wee League football and then little Johnny gets his hand hurt while he's playing? Like, little Johnny didn't plan that. Now, if you're saying the NFL is scripted, that might change my opinion. But yes. as far as we know, it is not scripted still. Well, I get what you're saying, but they're. Joe Burrow went into the game with a pre-existing condition. It's not like you went in the game perfectly healthy and then got hurt. He went in with an injury, but he Mm -hmm. was going to try to tough it through. Yeah. But you You don't think there's any difference? No. Think of – I can probably – if I put my mind to it, I could probably think of five sports players who consistently – who have done that all throughout their career. And things worked out good and bad. Michael Jordan's flu game, right? I'll be right Dude back. shouldn't have been playing. Go ahead. You're good. We'll 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 carry the load, my man. But like, yeah, Michael Jordan's flu game. Like he shouldn't have played. He did. Everybody knew he was sick. He still played. Still draw. You know, in that case, it worked out freaking wonderful. 
you know, he, he won the game, won the, sh- won the ship. Um, you know, think of, uh, who was it? Um, there was one, it was a, it was a football player. Who was it? Can't remember who it was. I just saw an article about it recently, but there's like, there's people who play with play sports with like broken tailbones, uh, go to hockey for crying out loud. You know, how many people have played with broken ribs during hockey, even after they knew they were at, they had broken ribs. They don't care. They just want to play. You know, they want to earn their money. They want to earn more money. That's how sports have gone since the beginning of time. You know, you've you played sports yourself. You get hurt while you're in the middle of it. Even if you're even next week comes around, you know, you're not playing all the time. Like this could be your last game. So, yeah, I, I've done it, too. You know, I had a fractured ankle partway through a game, finished it, was still fractured, still out of boot, still played the next game because. Yeah, pre-existing injury, who cares? I knew what the risks were going in and I wasn't forced to not play. So, yeah, I was going to play. But to me, that just seems like that's easily part of, you know, that's, that's just part of the game, part of sports. Okay. Money involved or not, in my opinion, it's just, that's how I feel. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. some wild whispers, man. <laughs> this is Josh being nosy. Moo, moo, moo. You can't hear him. Moo, moo, moo. Huh. Oh, I didn't hear anything from Nathan. Oh, was that? That was, that was a motorcycle. Background? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was his. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Do you have Jesus on your podcast? That's not Jesus. That's Princess Peach. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. We are not telling Nathan about this because I want to see him. I want to see Nathan react to this while he's editing this episode. He's like, do you have Jesus on your podcast? I'm like, what are you talking about? I I saw. Don't mention it to him because I want to see him. He's got to react to this whenever he's editing. What reaction? You'll You'll find find out when you're editing, man. It's pretty great. You won't take it out. It's nothing bad. It's just hilarious. Okay. Well, my favorite corner, Sports Corner, is now done. And now we're going into Alan Wake, episode three, which is what we played. I am out of breath. (sighs) Give me a second. This week. 30 seconds of his life. Oh, man. And uh, yeah, so that happened. I'm actually going to run through a recap of what happened in this episode, and then we're going to kind of talk about it, talk about our experiences. How about that? <sighs> You're making me breathe hard because I'm hearing you breathe hard. It's giving me and so are you. I was just carrying a bunch of heavy stuff. You ever watch like a movie or something and like they're like holding their breath or like they're struggling to breathe or like they're, <laughs> you're and the then you're like, too, don't you? and then you catch your, <laughs> yourself like, <sighs> like, why am I holding my breath? <sighs> wow. <clears throat> Somebody tamed that bear. Babe, did you see what I sent you? He looks like Look he's petting the through Amazon a raccoon. <laughs> Scratching well, his I chin. Sent it to <laughs> I love that he did that too before. <laughs> now, a little bit down, oh. down. Oh, now you're tickling Nathan. That's great. Thank you. Okay. My I, I, into... This is the background for my Twitch. And he goes, Is that your faces in the background with all them animals? I said, Yeah, it's my podcast. <laughs> Alan Wake, episode three. Recap. This is uh, what happens in the story and. Part, the story is also the gameplay and crap like that. So, yeah, uh, it starts right off with uh, Alan and uh, his good old buddy Barry from from last week. We talked about him. They arrive Barry, at the not tr- Barry Allen, Barry Wheeler. Much better. He's not as fast as Barry Allen. No, Barry Allen's although fast Wheel is heck, his name. boy. Arrive at the trailer park to meet Rose Marigold. Now, she is the the girl that you meet later, I think, or earlier in episode one in the diner. The one who's like, Alan Wake, I'm your biggest fan. So they meet Rose Rares Marigold in order to get the manuscript from which the kidnapper wants in exchange for releasing Alan Wake's wife. So instead, he receives a call. Not instead, but he receives a call from the sheriff. Josh, I can hear whatever you're playing. That's my wife. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Okay. He receives a call from the sheriff informing that Agent Nightingale is there at the station, anxious to see him. Instead, he goes to see Rose, uh, but both he and Barry are drugged. 
When Alan wakes up from mm, the ensuing drugs. nightmare, I know, he finds out that the editors are Barbara Jagger and Thomas Zane. And then he refuses to carry Barry all the way back, and so he just leaves Barry, him. Barry. He just leaves him at Rose's uh, at Rose's house, and Rose is just like in the fetal position in the corner because she was Bro, like, I'm "Glad you brought that up." There's some weird crap going on in this story because Rose was like taken over by that lady, that creepy lady who gave you the key to the place in the first mm-hmm. place that met you in the hallway in episode one. There's weird crap going down. Like Rose is like possessed or something. Um, so he leaves. He leaves Barry. He's still drugged on the couch, and he's like, "Yeah, this guy's too fat. I can't carry him all the way." And then, uh, upon you returning, cry, man. he returns back to Barry's car. He's going to leave because he has to try and find meet the kidnapper. Like he lost oh, a day. I'm glad you mentioned that. He's leaving Barry and stealing his car. He is. What a friend, man! Uh, it's actually friend. wild. He it, the only thing he's thinking of is I need to meet the kidnapper for my wife. Which I mean, to be fair, is a good reason because if he believes Honest, his wife yeah. is taken by this kidnapper, he's going to do everything in his power to get to there. So yeah, he gets back to Barry's car and is surrounded by FBI and police, led by Agent Nightingale. Bruh, and they just open fire. <laughs> he escapes the police in pursuit. So he just starts running from the FBI, which is an absolute wild thing to take way to take this story. I couldn't believe they did that. I'm just saying we'll get into it. We'll get into Dude, it. Dude, I couldn't believe in the freaking wild, wild west that was going on through from there onward. Like it was dude, a lot. There they was were a lot they were that. shoot first ask questions later. That was That's, nuts. I don't, I don't know. What's they also going on couldn't hit the broad side of a bar. They, yeah, they must did. They skipped troopers. police training. So he yeah. escapes the police in pursuit, but not before the what dark police training. The dark presence. Ooh, fru, Ooh. true, fru. That's cool. But not before what? Oh, brought to you by True Fru. That's a lie. Um, yeah, it's not true. Fru. I must. I must start this again. So. He escapes the police in pursuit, but not before being, wait, but not before the dark presence attacks them. So now I've, now, now the, the taken, I've also being seen called the dark presence. So it's a little confusing. I think maybe the, over, the overarching darkness that's been hitting the, their, his world or whatever, it's just calling it the dark presence. So as he gets to the KBF FM radio station, he encounters a darkness possessed gate, which blocks him in his way. Finding a way past, Taken appear and swarm him. Once he eludes them and reaches the station, he meets Pat Main, who's the guy that is always talking over the radio station. However, the that, cops that yeah. also Oh, sorry. Are you good? I was gonna say that's that's also the guy who like while he was was it when he was on the boat? Yeah, because that was yeah, it was, right? I or it was know. right when he got off the boat. But yeah, he was just like, yeah. I would love to have you for an interview. Yeah. And he was like, I'm not here. I'm here for vacation. Yeah. I don't want to no one to know I'm here. So yeah, that was on the boat. Yeah. You show up to that radio station and Pat's like, well, look who it is. It's good old Alan Wake. It's like the middle of the night and Alan Wake and then, just <laughs> poor, poor freaking Pat main, man. He just gets a whole bunch of hot lead in his office. Doesn't know what's going on. Yep. As soon as Alan Wake shows up and Pat, Main's like, I'm going to finally get that interview. The cops and Nightingale appear again, having Alan cornered. Sheriff Sarah Breaker appears and tries to intervene, pointing out to the agent that a civilian is present. But the agent goes off cock wild and shoots at Alan, missing but allowing like Alan police. to. Ass- I went to cops to watch this too. I don't want to alienate any any demographics. <sighs> We appreciate everybody. Missing but allowing Alan to escape once more. He reaches the train depot and gets into the car, destroying the possessed bulldozer and taken in the process. There's some wild crap that happens yeah. in this. So he travels to the coal mine museum, which is an old coal mine that has been turned into a museum. Wow. And waits until night for the call from Ben Mott, who is, I guess, the kidnapper, informing him about change of plans. So he and the kidnapper are to meet at the Mirror Peak look- lookout instead. So he was like, yeah, well, this is where we're going to meet. And then he like waits and then he gets a call. He's like, actually, we're going to meet somewhere else. So that happened. And on the on his way to the lookout, he encounters more taken and poltergeists. He crosses the ghost town and the silver mine when where he hears Alice Wake's voice from the tunnels leading to Cauldron Lake. <laughs> 
He gets out from the mine soon afterwards and emerges near the lookout. And as he does that, he passes through the mountain ruins and hears Mott has been tortured, admitting he never had Alice in the first place. He finally approaches the kidnapper, but the Dark Presence appears as a tornado form. It proceeds to pull Mott apart, slicing him in two. Always lovely. It then attempts to do the same to Alan, but he lights up the flare. Darth Maul. Darth Maul. What? He then, he, but the Alan lights up one of his flares and is thrown down to the lake. I have to say, this lake would have broken multiple bones in his body from how Hall, but we're not going to get into that. It's a video game. But at the very end of this, you see a hand reach into the lake to pull Alan from it. It, it shows him like sinking. And then there's a hand and that's the end of the episode. Yeah, I was pretty happy when that happened. So, yeah, that happened. Um, a lot of that. And there's there's a lot to break down. I don't know what order we want to go in, but I do have notes this time because I actually took notes about this game as I played it. Like as something happened, I would write it down like if I had a note about it. So uh, I don't know who wants to go. Hit first. us with your notes. Me. All right, we'll start right off. So the very first like I, I'm just going to kind of go off some notes here. But basically, the very first scene after the first cut scene is when you get to like that that trailer park. So I ran around the entire trailer park area and I checked out every little corner behind every trailer park. I checked to the front and the side of every single thing in case there was mm-hmm. some hidden manuscript page or coffee thermos. And there was absolutely yep. nothing. Bupkis. Absolutely. And it was bupkis. Really managed to tick off the guy showing me around, though. Yeah, me too. He was like, give me a break, Time guy. Out. I don't have all day. What's Why are up? we timing out? There's a high pollen warning for tomorrow. Just be careful out there. <laughs> this is utter chaos. I you might just oh, not man. edit this. I'm about to Yeah, I'm about to leave and come back. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to have so many you know cuts. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, I mean, I was confused at first because I thought maybe the thermoses and manuscript pages weren't in the real world, like during daytime when he's walking around and there's not crap attacking him. Mm -hmm. But things started getting like fuzzy during this episode because there's a point where he's like in broad daylight and like I don't know. I'm getting confused as to like what's supposed to actually be real and what's not, which I know is intentional. Thank you. But on the way uh, out when I had to leave uh, Rose's trailer and get to my car. There were manuscript pages and coffee thermoses, or at least one. Were the, were there manuscript pages there? I think there was there was at least the one. If not, I wasn't two. sure. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. I just but not remember. on the way in. So all that all that looking around was for nothing. And then I mean, you know, cool. I got to see more of the little world they built. But even then, um, so <laughs> it seems like. Oh, first off, I was confused because I didn't know that the FBI were coming after Alan. I still don't really know if I remember why, but when they yeah, showed I didn't up, remember that either. they like yelled at the guy that was showing you around and then they shot at Alan and then Alan ran from the FBI. Like, I couldn't believe that that happened in the first place. And did you notice that whenever they cut to the slow-mo, I'm fairly certain that that like first round or two was going straight through homie's chest. Like it looked like they were shooting that guy. I thought for sure he was dead. I was like, what? And then I saw him walking around. I was like, uh, <laughs> dude, you just had a bullet go through you. That guy has plot armor for no reason. Yeah. Uh, that's great. That's what we know of. <laughs> I was confused why he was running from the first place. I was confused why they were going after him. It was a little bit confusing in general, but I just went with it. And then the whole next mission or whatever, the next section, you're just like evading the police. That was what you, that was the gameplay. You didn't have a gun. Mm-hmm. You didn't have a flashlight. You didn't have anything. You're just trying to knock it. And I got shot multiple times, but I, that's the thing about Alan Wake is like, uh, some kind of crazy superhuman because he can get to the very brink of death. Oh and then you give gosh. it a few seconds and he's kind of regenerates. Like he's good, but the, nobody and in then, the game you know, talks about it. Yeah. You no know, one in the story uh, talks about after, it. after, you know, you evade the FBI and the police, you're just casually running through. And then, you know, trains get thrown at you. And that then you happen. just eat it like a champ. You're just like, Oh, that stung. Let me keep running. no, no, if a train, a piece of a train gets thrown at you, you're dead. You're not, you're eviscerated. You are red mist. 
And we are being a little bit cheeky because obviously some of these things are just video game things. They're just what happens. If this was a real story, Alan escaping the police didn't actually get shot because otherwise that would affect him the rest of the game. So um, apart from that, I I just wrote down the flashbangs are amazing because they're my favorite thing in the game. And I would save them up until I had a good group of dudes that I had to fight. And then I would just knock out four or five at once. It was all in. And when it first got all poltergeisty, I almost died because I was just, I was not expecting it. Hi. There's a little, a little gremlin behind me. (laughs) All right. We'll just, we'll just go with it. Um, (laughs) And, oh, by the way, I, I skipped this. So did anybody else run all the way up the mountain, all the way up the mountain to the yes. transmission tower just to get a single manuscript page? Mm-hmm. I might have. I don't remember. I don't it, think it's worth did. it. It was completely it was. It was completely optional, but I could have easily missed that, like not gone up there, like not realized I gone up. It's some of I feel like the thermoses are almost always like an easy to see, like plain sight. Mm-hmm. And then some of the manuscript pages, you really have to go out of the way of the actual game. To I missed them. quite a few this time. I, I, I didn't missed a few. care. I just wanted this section to be over when I started playing after a while. I still really try to find them, but I still ended up missing five. There's like this tw- is the over section 20. where Steve said he quit playing. Really? I can understand. Yeah. yeah. This one didn't bother me that much, really. Because I think what he posts is like when stuff starts getting thrown at you, I stopped. That was a pain. Yeah. That was that was a it pain. was. Um, so do you guys remember when you get to the vehicle part where you're trying to go to the coal mine and there mm-hmm. are two different broken bridges? Yes. Did you try to jump them? Because I did. No. I tried to jump one and it was the second one. And I, was I died both times. Oh, it I didn't great. die. Oh, you jumped. My it. car just kept on. I didn't No. No, mine just. Oh no, like, oh, no, no! The small great. one I didn't die. I'm sorry, the small one I didn't die. But if you go back the way you came, there's a bridge that you came across. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. is that like I guess I after, oh, you, after go, you left yeah, it. Yeah, you go. Got to go up around yeah, up yeah, yeah. the mountain. The mountain. I got super. I yeah. like got turned around at that part and got super confused. And I like was trying to look up what I was doing wrong, and nobody else had this confusion. I just got turned around and I didn't realize it. So I was going the opposite way. No, I didn't get turned around. My thing was, I don't know why, but every time I found a new vehicle, I'd get out of it and get in the new <laughs> every one. Time. Bro. Just- <laughs> I, every single vehicle I saw, I got into it. I was like, oh, wait, like, this, oh is this is the new one. Different. This yeah. is cool. <laughs> oh, look at that one. I really liked like the little like a park ranger vehicle or whatever. That was that was my favorite. But I I switched it every time. I'm surprised. I'm sad there wasn't an achievement mm-hmm. for it. Um, yeah, so I tried to jump the bridges. Didn't work. Uh uh, one thing I did mention is that I, I did enjoy a lot of the, there's a lot of little like gameplay touches that could have easily been left out, but someone decided to do it. There's a lot of little animations that are used for like one part of the game and then never again. Um, one specifically, the thing I'm thinking of is if you enter a car through the passenger door, you see him inside the car, like scoot over to the driver's side door and you can't drive the car until he's actually sitting there. So when I entered the silver mine and then you just start hearing Alan, Alan, that freaked the crap out of me at first. I was was not expecting that. that. Which raises a question. So my apologies. I didn't mean to interrupt. You're good. No, this is okay. So like you're saying it freaked me out following when you were following the voice. Did you go like down the left side to like the little. I guess we'll call it the small body of water that it led you to. Did any of you decide to jump in? No, I didn't. I wanted to, but I didn't. <laughs> I, felt I like, doubt like, anything happened there. But I was curious. I should. I should have went back and you tried, probably just like, die. Probably. Did you follow the creepy voices all the way to the bottom of? The yeah, cabin? that's what we're just talking about. Do you miss? Is there, you is missed, there an echo uh, in here, bro? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was asking if any of us jumped in. Oh, I don't think it let you. I, I think try. you could jump I over just... it. I jumped on the edge of the thing, and it seemed like it would let you. I just didn't go in. I didn't. I wanted to because I just was like, as soon as you get there, they show that like quick like screen grab of like her falling. Yeah. I was like, I wonder if I can jump in after. And I was like, no, I don't want to die because I don't remember when the last checkpoint was. Listen, I was creeped out, like chills, goosebumps going down. And then coming back out, I'm like, I regret coming down here. This is going to be such a long climb out. Wasn't there a manuscript page down there too, though? Yes, that's all that was down there. The whole time coming back up, I wasn't even thinking that. I was like, I'm going to have to fight so many of these stupid guys on the way back. I just know it. Mm. And then Listen, not a single one. 
Here's so you fight all like as soon as you come out of the coal mine building, like there's some you know how like these the first things that start getting thrown at you mm-hmm. are like all the, the railroad train tracks are real close together and you gotta like mm-hmm. walk through some of the train cars to get out. Mm-hmm. As soon as you come to that open field and I saw all of those fuel barrels. I immediately like something's going down. Like a game doesn't put thirty explosive mm-hmm. barrels in front of you to not use them. <laughs> yeah. Note yeah. to game developers out there: you should totally start doing that in games just to mess with us. Yeah, it'll like, get make us me every think time. something's coming, and then be like, "What?" <clears throat> so I have one final note. Um, do you guys remember very, very near the end? Whenever you make it to Cauldron Lake. Um, which is like the end of it. I mean, because you meet the dude and fall into the lake. But when you first, when you get to the sign that tells you about Cauldron Lake and says um, that it's like a, it's like a Caldera Lake, whatever. And then you cross that really, really long hanging bridge. And okay. it, once you hit the middle of it, there's like a cut scene and like four shadow dudes come at you while you're on the bridge. Mm-hmm. Does this sound familiar? Yes. Okay. Well, before that cutscene, I had been aiming directly forward down the end of the bridge with my flashlight. And then the cutscene happened. And you know the little circle that appears on the dude when you're shining the flashlight on him and like the sound it makes? Mm-hmm. Because I was aiming forward and the shadow dude shows up, that circle and the sound happened in the middle of the cutscene, and by the time that little cutscene was over, the guy was already like shield broken, and I was able to just shoot him, which nice. I was very surprised. I mean, it makes sense, but pretty because pretty much what they do is it's it's just like a, it's almost like a well, not a quick time event, but they pretty much like they don't really take you to an actual pre rendered cutscene. It's just the camera moves; you can't control your character for a bit, and then the dudes show up. But what you're doing in the moment is like if I had turned to the side, I think perhaps I would have been turned to the side in it. So I find I just found it interesting that it would the flashlight would affect the creature in the middle uh, the the taken in the middle of that little cut scene. I don't know what else to call it, but it was just it the camera going back and showing the dude showing up. Yeah, um, but I found that interesting. Oh, yeah. That's pretty much all I have to say about the, the episode this week. Anyone else want to add anything? notes stuff like that <clears throat> just a lot of boss battles train cars I, i'm pretty upset that entire train car didn't get thrown at me it was just the little pieces like i wanted a whole train just to be in, like trucked at you there was a very specific point where you're walking up a hill and one lands directly almost on top of you do you I mean remember. like I, I remember a tractor? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Okay, but and it, it goes wasn't to that little town. It wasn't like it didn't come to life and try to attack you. But yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I wanted like a whole train car to like come to life and like. I wanted I wanted the mountain to become possessed by the darkness and just throw itself at you. I uh, I died once when you come to that little town mm-hmm. and you got to go into like into the tunnel. So much, like 30 things attacked me at once, and I was just like, what? <laughs> and then I came back to life, Flash and I bang. got the pieces stuck. I, I died so many times in that stupid mine tunnel with the, um, the like, uh, the lift puzzle, because I don't know what would happen. You, you really? had to, like, lift the beams up. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. what would happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, would, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would only screw up because I would jump on it, and my dude would, like, slide off uncontrollably like two or three times. I was like, what, what is going on? Why are they making a platformer game of a guy who can't jump six inches? This is stupid skill issue. Ooh. Apparently, <laughs> apparently it was a skill issue, but as Nathan. soon as I stopped jumping, I was fine. <laughs> uh, Andrew, I had once where I almost fell off. <laughs> like, like I jump and I'd be like, don't move. Don't move. All right. We're good. It seems like sometimes they have that extra like animation where he takes like yeah. a step or two, and sometimes it just doesn't. Like where your character character settles. Yeah uh, the 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 actual movement of of Alan is very like un- it's awkward. Like it's he's not the most easy easy character to control in a video game. I see why he's sure. an author, not an athlete. I got an Awfully. achievement for flash banging a bunch of the ghouls things too. at once. Me three. 
The flashbangs are wonderful. I got an achievement for finding so many coffee thermoses, but I still have no right. idea what they're for. Me neither. The, I wish they'd talk about it or something. Like maybe they it's will. Just it's just a collectible thing. More it's just like they threw in uh, the ability to collect something for completions, completionist sake. Yeah. And to explore that more. That's what the manuscripts are too, but they, they used to have like a gameplay aspect by you can like, it's like a story, but. <clears throat> I really want them to use those thermoses for something, but yeah, like I thought he would. I don't know. Uh, I wrote down that my new current uh, plot of the story is maybe it's a dream or hallucination to help unblock the writer's block. Alan Wake is having like maybe he's uh, with that actual doctor. Maybe he's like hypnotized or something in a dream state, and uh, which is why the wife brought him to the town to begin with. Um. So it kind of like shows how it's true, but a nightmare at the same time. And so. maybe the drugging was the doctor sedating him because he wouldn't yeah. cooperate. Not like he's like, oh, die. He was just like, you know, you need to sleep, bro. Cause or maybe nothing. the doctor is an evil person, which is why we hit him in the first place at the police station. And now we're like under hypnotics or whatever at the doctor's place, like being tied down. It's fair enough. Like Could be in a like happy hospital right now or something. Yeah. Speaking of uh, not the happy hospital, ha- <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> at the at the beginning of this chapter, they mentioned the other author. Do you remember his name again? Because I don't remember. Yes, because you find his books at one point. Not that's like what I was going to ask. But I wasn't sure. Them. I wasn't sure if that was the same author or not. Because that's what, what I was going to ask. I don't remember. Yeah, it, it is the same author. Okay. I don't remember There's where you probably find something the books. To do with it. Is what? it at your house? So, yeah, I think been. it is. At episode so. two, it at the house, when you go in, like, your wife is in the office, like, printing something, and mm-hmm. you go in the other room where the barcode is, I think the bookshelf has those books. Interesting. I think so. Yeah, the I can't remember his name. It was the some the dude's it's name like, and Barbara. Chris? The the guy he was like the very first f- person you mentioned in the recap, because I just can't remember the guy's name. But I was curious if it was the same name as the the books that we found earlier. I'm pretty sure it is important. because when it came up, I like connected. I was like, oh, I remember. I did too, these but books. you know, nine concussions. So I thought maybe I was just. Dumb. But yeah, that was that was my big takeaway. The story. I'm still irritated because the story hasn't maybe maybe episode four, since there's only six episodes in this game, they'll start putting pieces together. But I was like, bro, you got to there's too many bad plot points right now, man. I don't like it. It's not making sense. Nothing's connecting. There's not even a hindrance of a connecting. And a bunch the of gameplay, that's my point. The gameplay is not sealing the deal for me so i need story bro yeah i'm not a huge fan of the it. gameplay i mean it's it's it, <clears throat> it was it, it's it's created a certain way for a certain purpose they wanted you mm-hmm. to feel uh, disoriented in a way i mean they seem to constantly like with the oh. shadow the taken showing up all over the place like the the darkness making everything wavy and like i i honestly feel mm-hmm. like they didn't just say let's make the gameplay bad. They just said it's a horror game and we want to make it like a little difficult and we want to. Well, but know. you also gotta like think too, like war games like Tarkov or Call of Duty and all that. You're soldiers. Gameplay is all based off of like these. They they have experience and mm-hmm. everything. This guy's a writer mm. fighting shielded ghost with a flashlight and random objects he's finding in the woods. He's a pretty good shot, so, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, just, I mean, the gameplay, the actual gameplay like, of the yeah. game itself is not my favorite, but I like the game. Everybody, I want us and... to talk at the same time in three, two, one. Let's all blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah, talk blah, blah, at the, blah. Yeah, the same, same time. time. It was a good time. We're good at this. <gasps> kitty! I saw the kitty. It's not a vampire because his reflection shows. Um, is that all we have to say about Alan Wake for now? It is. Alan Wake was pretty good this week. I'm excited to see what the game brings next week. You know, with uh, Thanksgiving, I might be able to actually finish the game this week, but we'll see. Let's Um, not. Let's just play episode four. No, I'm just going to do one episode, but I think it's time to move into fantasy draft. And with that, Andrew. Let's do it. Fantasy draft time. He's bringing up his son. There we go.
Yeah, I was I it, it went away and I was a little slow on the draw. But yeah, it's fantasy draft time. I love what is the it? air horn sound effect. Uh, so because, of course, this is going to be coming out for the week of Thanksgiving, uh, we have a fantasy draft about Thanksgiving stuff. Uh, so uh, we got two choices. Uh, but rather than being stereotypical and being like, yeah, what is the best thing about freaking Thanksgiving food wise? Like, yeah, but I'm still a food guy, so we're going to stick with it. But our fantasy draft is going to be the top two things that you would immediately say, we don't need you at Thanksgiving because you're trash. So what are two things that you would get rid of at Thanksgiving if you could food wise? Because I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, I don't want aunt Cass to be at thanksgiving that's just rude josh order. we're gonna stick with food well since it's andrews it's you me andrew andrew me you okay me you. um you too uh cranberry sauce next bro thank you i actually agree with you cranberry sauce is hot trash i would stab both of you with a fork if i was in the vicinity well I'd hold like up it. we gotta a ask lot. then if you're if you're mr cranberry connoisseur do you get the the jellied can stuff, or do you get the homemade yes. stuff? No, it's got to come See, from that can. I was just talking about this. Everyone is super obsessed with this, and they're like, it's the ridges. It provides a place for me to cut. And I'm like, No, Bro. I don't care about the ridges. It's the fact that you have this beautiful what? log of red jello <laughs> that when you eat it, it's like you're like eating candied cranberries. It's It's amazing. And it's got such a tartness that the entire Thanksgiving meal is so savory. Like everything, there's nothing sweet or anything about Thanksgiving. It's all savory food, the gravy, well, can, all that. And then you got I this can, tart hint with the cranberry juice. Mwah. I can tell you that Nathan and I agree that there's nothing sweet about your opinion. It's horrible. And you have the tartness. Mm. Yeah. So give us your tart pick there, sir. What would you get rid of at Thanksgiving? Frozen dinner rolls. Mm. This is on purpose. (laughs) He left. He goodbye. I can't. There we go. Yeah. How dare you? I Very don't plain. I'm pretty it's neutral. It's a brick of I'm dough kind of that you put in the oven on this one. and it comes out and they're they're just bland. It's dough and well, let butter. Me, let though. me ask let me ask though cuz you said frozen dinner rolls. Are you opposed to like not having dinner rolls or are no, you just saying No, the wine all the way if you're going to go with rolls. I might have to disagree. Kings of wine are good, but Thanksgiving you definitely got to have a roll, not like a sweet bun. Well, they're not all sweet. It just depends on what kind because they make different varieties mm-hmm. of their. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, but doesn't the, ki- let me I doesn't King's Hawaiian do frozen rolls though? Like, aren't they a big one for that? That's, no, well, they come not. in the the orange bag with the like paper sleeve under them, and you just pull them out and you break them apart and eat them. I'm talking about Fun like fact, your grandmother you're supposed to put those in the oven, and I didn't know that for like ever. I just eat them. <laughs> me too. Break them off. <laughs> I'm talking like your 80 year old grandmother has had rolls in her freezer for like 10 years, goes in the freezer, mm-hmm. pulls out that plastic see-through bag, mm-hmm. puts them on a plate, and then just bakes them. But those Give it ones. to me. Get them, and then get them out slather of it with butter. Nah. Oh, we need to get you out of here. Nah. Uh, so, yeah, so my first thing I'd get rid of, highly controversial, stuffing can go stuff it. Straight yeah. up, stuffing's stuffing disgusting. Is Screw the stuffing, best part dude. Stuffing is so unnecessary. It's, it's just nasty. No, it's, it's an art. Out of here. It's literally just the germ breeding ground. You schemer. My problem I even, is I can't say what I want to say. I have to come up with another second now. I yeah, it's not you that guys easy. Don't deserve but like stuffing, bro. Stuffing. You don't deserve Thanksgiving. No cranberry sauce Ugh. or stuffing. Like you're talking about getting rid of the bread, like bro. I didn't say it's all breads. Carbs. I gave you a specific roll. Well, listen here. Get your holier than thou self out of here, because I can't even see your face right now. Your screen's so bright. 
<laughs> tone it down, sir. Quit trying to pull out the holy roller on us and be like, <laughs> I think the frozen dinner rolls should be gone and your opinion is Garbo. I am true That's Thanksgiving <laughs> connoisseur. Andrew, what's your second? No, you're not. My second. I don't and... even want to be here anymore. <laughs> you know what? I don't want to be here anymore. Green bean casserole. It's trash. Green beans are horrible. It is not trash. I love green beans. Green bean casserole is not my favorite. Um, it's delicious if I, it's made right, especially with the crunchy French agree. onions on top. I think maybe I just never get people making it right because I'm not a huge. I love green beans, but not a huge That's fan the of the thing. casserole. And, and I have, I do have a very controversial third, but I, you know, we're not that far. People we'll are gonna hate state. my second. I can't wait. I don't even have a second. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, I you got rid of the bread. You can't get rid of anything else. You won't be full. I love everything that's made with Thanksgiving. I know. Thanksgiving food is one of my favorites. <laughs> you literally, it's like 30 different sides in turkey you throw on the plate. Yeah, so what? You gotta pick something else, though. We're gonna be disappointed anyway. Pick so your least favorite out of all of it. Peanuts. Mm-hmm. Who has peanuts at Thanksgiving? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what other sides. I, I love corn pudding. Absolutely love corn pudding. Love sweet potato casserole. I mm. love stuffing. I go back for stuffing all the time. Gravy on stuffing is fantastic. Turkey's Ooh. good if it's made right. Cranberry, we already went over that. Mashed potatoes, freaking fantastic. Mac and cheese yep. is a beautiful creation. Green bean casserole with the French onions on top and uh, cream of mushroom in it, fantastic. <laughs> like, I, what, what else other sides am I missing? Are this you going... is meant to be difficult. <sighs> Hurt yourself, Josh. Get Make rid of something, something. Go away. And wait for us to tear you apart when you do it. I don't like when other people make the turkey. Yep. Yeah, well, so you're just getting rid of turkey. I don't like oven baked turkey. Headline. That's that's the that's the one. That's the episode title. Josh gets rid of turkey on Thanksgiving. I can't believe we've. We, I can't believe you've done this, Ronald. <laughs> Harry, I can't believe you've done this. Ronald Weasley. <laughs> mm, I, th- there's no amount. Of, I'll get rid of the. I don't know what to get rid of. So instead of getting rid of the side, I'm going to get rid of the a main turkey. thing you have on Thanksgiving. That's like turkey. saying the mashed potatoes. Bro. I He's said like, a but very it's only specific when else. way of how it was cooked, and it's oven baked. You said it in the most pretentious, selfish way, because originally you didn't say oven baked. You, you said, said turkey. quote, when someone else makes the turkey. Yeah, because apparently you do it better than everyone else in the world. Well, first of all, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's fair. He... <laughs> so listen, there's only two ways to make a turkey. You smoke it or you deep fry it. <laughs> if it's in the oven, you might as well put butter, gravy, <laughs> Or you're eating cardboard. So I had a I had an oven turkey two day, yesterday that was actually really juicy. I was surprised. Oh, if you're making food well, you shouldn't need to put gravy on top of it. Screw gravy. We don't need that. Bro, wait no. a minute. No, that's like saying you're gonna eat a salad, uh, like a a steak salad without ranch. Why would I use ranch? I literally ate a salad the other day with no dressing on it, and it was wonderful. This is what so. How do we kick Nathan out of this? When you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. This is the beardless Nathan attitude that we don't. I will like. never. I will never put gravy on potatoes because potatoes are magnificent by themselves. Gravy adds a but flavor that is the, not necessary. Oh, uh, it's not necessary, but it's amazing. It makes them, got, the, like, it makes the potatoes the worse. Wait a minute. I told you you're going to hate my second. Don't Hold make on. me drop the We've bomb. We've got to unpack this. First of all, what kind of potatoes are you talking about? Because potatoes should be cooked in beef broth. And then gravy should be made out of drippings from the yes. main course's meat. Yes. Yes. How does that not? You're eating now, juicy you juice me, with potato <laughs> juice. <laughs> you t- you tell me you w- you're gonna have some like cheesy potatoes, sour cream and chive potato. You know what? I can see where in certain instances you may not want. I agree with that. Here. But if you're just talking like we're just getting some good old mashed taters, 
heck yeah, throw some gravy on. If there's no gravy, I'll just throw a pat of butter on that bad boy. But definitely some gravy, man. That's nuts. It's all right because my really controversial I am about your third. third. Yeah, my really controversial third was already mentioned because I think there are so many people who are like, "Oh, I make this so good," and it's absolute garbage, dude. Too many people mess up mac and cheese on Thanksgiving. Too many people. They think and it's so good, and it's for driest. Gravy. You're gonna tr- try the driest, crunchiest mac and cheese you've ever had. And it's like I'm eating powder because the noodles are overcooked. The freaking crust on top is the only thing you can taste. And it's burnt because you were like, oh, I didn't use enough cheese or milk or I didn't make a roux before I made my mac and cheese. (laughs) It needs to be slight. needs to look like it's slightly messy, man, so that whenever it bakes in the oven, it's not drier than a freaking rubber tire that I'm trying to eat. I want somewhat creamy mac and cheese, man. And too many people mess it up. pretty good. Baked mac and cheese. She does, because it's creamy. She's just good at bacon in general. Listen, you guys want to hear something about a church meal? Sure. Nope. Good night. This is uh, this was Andrew signing. I'm just kidding. All right. Okay. I'm Josh. Good night. <laughs> Hit me with you? the church meal, man. No names. Okay. Oh, I already know who it is then. Hit me. <laughs> <laughs> when my wife had our son, the oh. church made meals for like two weeks. Mm-hmm. And 30 different people decided it would be a great idea for each one of them to make lasagna. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You can mess up a lasagna, bro. <laughs> I've never had lasagna that was supposed to be lasagna but came out as soup. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, man. Don't name names, but that happened. It was terrible. Name names after the podcast so I know not to accept lasagna from a certain person. This is why you sign up for our Patreon that's not made yet. You get to know the juicy deets like this juicy lasagna that Josh Uh, is. It was straight liquid instead of like a thick sauce. The noodles were hard. I like. Like, and, and here's the thing, like, you know. Everyone knows lasagna, while it's not difficult, it's not like something you can throw together pretty easy and just know what you're doing if you haven't done it before. And that's why so many people are like, let me just grab this Stouffer's. That would have been better than soup. (laughs) Like, I'm not kidding. Soup isn't an exaggeration. It was, we had to eat it in bowls because you couldn't put it on paper plates. Wow. That's rough. Yeah, Yeah, it it was rough. It's rough. As much as it was appreciated, never again. <laughs> never again. Ah, <sighs> yep. Well, just tell them you would like if they try to give you lasagna again. Say that you developed an allergy. Just because That's I don't, don't think that I them. was. Just because I don't think I was torn apart enough this episode, Josh. Let's end with this. What is because you know you know you were at the the house when there was uh, you know fifty six people living with me back in the day. And you, you've, you've done some of these things alongside me. We've had some great adventures and we've had some mishaps. What is the most disgusting, terrifying thing that we or me have made that you've eaten? Because we have made some baller decisions and we have made some ball I drop. don't remember any <laughs> negative things that we made. Oh, I the can one, definitely name at least one. The one that sticks out to me all the time was when you were living in uh, what's his face's house on right off of Racetrack Road. And we made this like casserole meat dish with yes, like that's sausages in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and then we like piled it up. Oh, that was so bad. I remember the bad one was when we got like 10 of every fast foods main <laughs> burger we tried to make you... our own epic mealtime lasagna yeah yeah that was terrible <laughs> it was that pretty sounds bad. so it fun, came out though. rough i was going more to the uh i think it was that sausage one because we had sausage and i believe there was chicken in it but there was we made some type of no oh, i think it was marinara sauce i don't think it was gravy but we decided that bisquick was going to be perfectly fine as a substitute for biscuit mix 
and it was pancake mix and we threw all that stuff oh, together man. threw it in the oven we were like this is going to be so dope and it was just not good <laughs> at all it was consistency horrible. or taste taste okay yeah too much sweet with too much not sweet Fair. too much savory it was pretty bad it was like wrapping pancakes around chicken <laughs> yeah isn't not that good. a meal though chicken and waffles chicken and waffles that's that's a very common thing yeah but waffle is different than just it's different. throwing bisquick powder. That's fair. We basically That's took fair. bisquick powder and just put it on a casserole. Like, yeah, you know, it's really what happened. It wasn't good. It's going to be it's different like adding flour to a roux, but you added bisquick to sausage juice. <laughs> Ew, sausage juice. <laughs> Oof. I just imagine Josh taking like a, a big link and just was like. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, we need essence of sausage. Essence. Oh my gosh. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the essence of sausage. I am Nathan, the uh, squire of sausage. I am Josh, the eater of sausage. I am Andrew, the plane. And I was Nathan, but uh, thanks for watching, guys. It was a good time. We'll see you next week. And once again, if you want to play to episode. Hold on. This comes out next oh. week. After Thanksgiving. Yes. So if you want to play the episode four, Complete three, yeah. then the week after we'll be able to talk about it and you won't get spoiled. Good stuff. Yep. Yeah, buddy. See oh, you around. Okay. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. It was. <laughs>